Hello everybody, welcome back to Zombie Zoology. I'm Zombie Zebra and today I'm doing another Take a Minute for Chronic Illness video. This is part of my uploading a video every day in May series that I am doing for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome Awareness Month. So look out for new videos on my channel every single day. Hopefully a bad flare doesn't get in the way of this. So let's jump into POTS, or the longer name that I'm going to butcher, Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. I butchered that third word and I apologize for it. POTS is a disorder that is considered to be comorbid with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Lots of people with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome will experience POTS, and several POTS patients are found to also have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Some of the symptoms for POTS are fatigue, headaches like headedness, heart palpitations, exercise intolerance, nausea, diminished concentration, shaking, syncope, coldness or pain of extremities, chest pain, shortness of breath, and gastric motility. So POTS is a lot of things. Probably the most noticeable symptom of POTS is, for me is when I stand up, my heart goes crazy and I see spots and I get really dizzy. Now, POTS is diagnosed by a heart rate increase of 30 beats per minute or more, or over 120 beats per minute in the, within the first 10 minutes of standing. So it's not just right when you stand up, your heart rate goes up a bit, because everybody's heart rate goes up a bit. Your heart is trying to compensate for now having to work against gravity. That's very, very normal. People with POTS, their heart, for whatever reason, is having to work so, so hard that they're having to suddenly increase by over 30 beats per minute or go up as high as 120 beats per minute just to keep your blood cycling. And sometimes it's not effective. People with POTS will often experience blood pooling in their legs because your heart is not as strong as gravity and that can be very painful. So the most common treatments for POTS are an increased water intake of two to three liters per day and increased salt consumption. I am supposed to consume 10 grams of salt a day and let me tell you that is difficult. POTS patients will also wear compression stockings to minimize blood pooling in their legs. And they'll also tend to do more reclined exercises such as rowing, recumbent bicycling, swimming, etc. People with POTS will also likely choose to spend more time in recliners or in bed because when you are not fighting against gravity, it's a lot easier to get blood circulation throughout your whole body. Exercise is a very common treatment for POTS, but it's very important to do it the right way. Just going out and sprinting a mile is not going to help your POTS because it is going to trigger heart palpitations and you're just going to crash the next day. So with an individualized combination of diet, exercise, lifestyle adaptions, and medication, most patients will see an improvement in their symptoms and quality of life. If the cause that's identified is treatable, POTS symptoms may go away completely. So it, it all depends on what is causing the POTS. POTS tends to be a symptom of something else, not a thing that happens on its own. Generally, people all have their own experiences. Approximately 25% of POTS patients are disabled and unable to work. So it is a really serious thing. I, I feel like some people think of POTS as just like, oh, I get up and get dizzy. But POTS can be extremely debilitating. It can make it impossible to get out of bed. It can make you too fatigued, really to function. So uh, POTS is a very important thing to raise awareness about. It's a very important thing to look out for, which is why I wanted to talk about it during EDS Awareness Month. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, hoard those spoons, guys.